Case number seven. Here's a 45-year-old guy who comes in with chest pain, He's actively having pain. Here's the 12 lead. Notice there's no ST elevation anywhere. You know, may, maybe a tiny bit in lead AVR, which is common with what we're about to talk about. There is some ST segment depression in V2, V3, V4, V5, V6. And so let's say you go ahead and do posterior leads. Let's say the posterior leads don't show any elevation. So you're thinking, well, this is just cardiac ischemia, but there's something special about this type of ST segment depression. Take a look here. Notice there's ST segment depression. There's probably the J point right there. But this ST segment depression is shooting up into these big, tall, symmetric, giant, hyperacute looking T waves. Right? This pattern of ST depression shooting into big, tall, hyperacute T waves in the mid precordial leads, V2, V3, V4. I'll say it all again. ST segment depression shooting into big, tall, hyperacute T waves in the mid precordial leads during pain is something that's been identified as a, what's referred to as the de-winter T wave pattern. This de-winter T wave pattern is highly predictive of an acutely unstable proximal LAD. All four words are important. Acutely unstable proximal LAD, right? Proximal LAD blockage. This was first described only about 15 years ago, 2008. So it's really a relatively new diagnosis in the world of electrocardiography. I mean, EKGs have been out for well over 100 years, and this is only identified 15 years ago. And there's been a handful of articles talking about this, many, many cases. There's some recent articles suggesting that this should be a new STEMI equivalent. Again, what this predicts is an acutely unstable proximal LAD. You see up here every now and then it can be a diagonal or left circ, but proximal LAD is far more common. And when you see this pattern, you really ought to think about getting this patient to the cath lab as quickly as possible. And there's an increasing push to get these patients to the cath lab immediately. And in fact, the newest guidelines that were published in the US in October 2011, or rather 2023, to October 2022, sorry, um, that I referred to earlier, have now incorporated the de-winter T-wave into the guidelines for emergent activation. So when you see this pattern, you ought to get on the phone and try to get this patient to the cath lab as quickly as possible. What is the normal progression of an acutely unstable proximal LAD blockage? Well, typically what you're going to end up seeing, again, this is a blow up, of the ST segment depression shooting into the big, tall, symmetric T waves, typically what happens is that these patients will go on to develop a big anterior wall STEMI over the course of the next half an hour, couple of hours, several hours. But that's the normal progression if these patients aren't treated right away as aggressively as possible. As you see in this case, this did turn into an anterior wall STEMI. This was a number of years ago. The guidelines now would have allowed us to activate the cath lab at this point, right? When we had this case a handful of years ago, the guidelines didn't say activate right now, but now the guidelines say this patient probably ought to be sent to the cath lab immediately. I'll show you a handful more examples. These are from some of the articles that have been published. This is from the 2008. These are eight different cases of, of the winter TY pattern. Just take a look at the pattern. Uh, so that it kind of get, gets burned into your memory. Mid-precordial leads, V2, V3, V4, those are your money leads. It might extend to the other precordial leads, but V2, V3, V4, those are your money leads. And what you'll notice here, ST depression, often upsloping, but it can also be horizontal, uh, typically upsloping ST depression, shooting into big, tall, symmetric T waves. This is not just normal hyperacute T waves. Because normal hyperacute T waves don't have ST depression. These are ST depression shooting into big, tall, symmetric T waves. When you see that in the mid precordial leads in a symptomatic patient, that's referred to as the de winter T wave pattern. That patient is going to turn into a big anterior STEMI if you sit on it and don't do something about it. Here's another article. Again, here's five more examples mid precordial leads. ST segment depression shooting into big, tall, symmetric, hyper-QT waves. Usually it's upsloping, but it can sometimes be horizontal. 
shooting into big, tall, symmetric T waves in those mid precordial leads. There's a great example right there. Upsloping up into a huge, upright, symmetric T wave. When you see that pattern, that's the dewinter T wave pattern. This is an EKG I showed you much earlier in the day. And again, this is another example of the dewinter T wave pattern. Take a look at V2, and you see there's the J point right there where the QRS complex S wave changes direction. So that's the J point. So there's ST depression shooting into a big, tall, symmetric T wave in the mid precordial leads. And you might recall about 45 minutes later, this patient ended up turning into an anterior stem. Anterior stemmy. Here's your baseline. So this turned into an anterior wall stemmy. Um, again, we got this repeat EKG about 45 minutes later. Had we known back then what we know now, and if we had the current set of guidelines, we would have activated the cath lab right here. And that's what the October 2022 ACCHA guidelines now say. If you see the winter t wave pattern, you don't need to sit on it and wait for it. You can go ahead and activate the cath lab right now because this is going to turn into an anterior STEMI. You might as well get them to the cath lab sooner rather than waiting and letting them turn into a STEMI. And here's a case that was sent from a friend in Chile. Again, mid precordial leads, V2, V3, V4. You can see that there's some ST depression shooting into a big, tall, symmetric T wave. There's a J point right there, big, tall, symmetric T wave. This patient also, uh, they didn't recognize that this was the dewinter pattern initially. This was a number of years ago. And the natural progression of this over the next several hours, it turned into an anterior wall STEMI. And that was, again, predictable, 90% Proxima LAD. So again, what is the dewinter T wave pattern? This is a pattern that I think everyone needs to know about now. It's a sign of an acutely unstable proximal LAD blockage. If you don't treat these patients aggressively, they're probably going to turn into an anterior STEMI in the next several hours. So the guidelines are now endorsing this as a STEMI equivalent, or if you want to call it an OMI, or I call this an acute coronary occlusion, an acutely unstable proximal LAD acute coronary occlusion. Not subacute, not chronic, but acute coronary occlusion. And that means that you need to get these patients to the cath lab. And again, the American College of Cardiology now endorses this as a, uh, a STEMI equivalent. Get them to the cath lab as quickly as possible. And here's the article once again for your reference. Um, <clears throat> again, uh, take a look at this article, the ACC Expert Consensus Decision Pathways published in the fall of this past year. This has now incorporated the dewinter t wave pattern as a new STEMI equivalent. Get them to the cath lab. Don't sit on them any longer and wait.